So for today's adventure, we're going to need uh, some sort of Arduino with a screen. I'm using this uh, fancy ESP32. I want to say it was like $10 at most, uh, mostly because it already comes with all the screen and stuff. And if I want to add Wi-Fi to it later, or if I want to use the Wi-Fi on it later, it already has it there. And it's got LoRa and other things, but it's mostly because it already has a screen on it. Um, some sort of cable. Um, we're mostly going to be using that for um, in order to put the co code on there. Uh, we're going to need a toggle switch. Uh, like that, so you can turn it on and turn it off when you need it. We're going to need two uh, potentiometers. And we're going to need a bunch of cables. Uh, but basically you've got you know a typical voltage divider setup you've got the white cable which goes to the upper resistor um, and that goes to the five volts on the arduino which normally is above the 3.3 that the asp32 analog would like to read but because of this voltage divider we can read it and uh, so that goes down to the purple cable so through the resistor to the purple cable this purple cable splits off um, as you can imagine, the typical voltage divider, divider diagram. Uh, so the purple cable uh, goes to the bottom resistor and it goes to the analog, which um, here I'm doing analog 13. And then finally, um, you've got the black cable, which also splits into the two blue cables um, because you got to go to ground somewhere right you've got your five volts over here and you got your ground um that, that that's what the voltage that you're trying to measure and then it also um goes to the ground here because you know you need the ground on the other side too uh for your analog device to measure anything and um to save power i wired in this other guy in the way so i've got the one of the five volts on the arduino sorry on the raspberry pi zero is being used to power the the esp32 and then um i've got that wired through this uh toggle switch so you can see it turns off and then turns back on again and so that way it's not draining power when i don't need it and when i do need it i can just click it and read the power and uh yeah so the trick to using this is you want your uh, high level, you know, your R1, your, your first resistor, to be somewhere in the middle. And um, if it's if it's too, like if you're turning your bottom knob and it's still not working, then you probably want to turn it up a bit. So, or I guess down a bit. It'll it's pretty intuitive. Um, so right now it's at 99.92. It's really supposed to be 100, but there's some rounding errors. It's no big deal. And so once that's around the middle, then you go to your bottom resistor, your low side, R2, and you just kind of tune it until it's at 99.2. So I already had it there, so I'm just going to tune it back up. So I'm just slowly rotating it clockwise. And you, barely, you want just barely at 99.2. There you go. And so there we have it. So now we're reading this, uh, the Arduino, no, sorry, the Raspberry Pi. Now the Raspberry Pi is not going to change, so I guess it's, it could look better. But yeah, you're, you're reading 5 volts with something that's only supposed to read 3.3. And um, because of these two potentiometers, you can kind of you know generalize this for any system that you need up to a certain amount. I think like 10 to 1 is, is the main ratio, so I think you can't really go past the... Uh, 30 volts safely. The Arduino code, the ESP32 code, is relatively straightforward. Um, first, you need to use the Heltec library, and that's going to be for the displays. Uh, so include that, and then you know you get your setup and your loop. Um, in the setup, I'm just using uh, 115 200 for the uh, serial, and that's really just for debugging. Um, then you got to begin, and you're basically telling it that you're going to be using the display. And the serial, although I think the serial works whether or not you have that, but you need that for the display. 
Um, and then you can set the font. I'm not sure you have to have that. I just have it, you know, as Arial plain. Maybe I'll change the font size. That'd be useful because it's right now it's kind of tiny. Um, and then finally, uh, we're going to be reading the analog from uh, analog pin 13. So then the loop is just, you know, reading over and over. It's reading the, that pin 13. It's printing that out, you know, skipping a line. And then you clear it so that you can write the, on the display again. And then you draw, and uh, I probably should have separated out this formula. Um, but you're basically, you know, changing the, that formula of numbers that you're reading from the analog into a string. And then you're displaying it right here with a Heltec display. And then you wait, you know, 500 milliseconds. And basically what the formula does is it, it kind of uh, remaps the, the 0 to you know, 496 to um, you only, you know, a battery is basically dead when it's at around 70%. I mean, it depends on, on what battery, but, you know, 70% might even be a, a, a low number. Uh, but, you know, the idea is that you set it to whatever you want your low number to be. And that's why you got, you know, 70% up here and then 0.3% here or yeah, sorry, 30% down here is because we only really care about that top 30%. And, you know, if the battery, if the total voltage of the battery is 70% of, sorry, if the voltage you're reading is 70% of the total voltage, then you're done. Like that, that's, that's it. You, you should just read out zero, like, Hey, you know, we got to recharge this battery. And so that's, that's what it's mapped to. So, and then it's got a percent, you know, it's dividing and then you got a percentage. So, in other words, if it's at if it's saying it's at 50%, it you know it means that the total voltage is probably like you know 85% of of the you know of the total. And yeah, and then if it's at 100, it's 100. And and you can remap that however you want. That's just how I did it. And yeah, and then you delay and then you loop over and over.